Hey friends, so I wanted to do a video on frequently asked questions about adoption and foster care. Um, I know that there are so many questions out there when you first begin the process, when you first become interested or you feel led to help out in some way within the foster um, and adoption community even. And so I wanted to answer some questions um, and also just kind of talk about the types of questions that are okay to ask adoptive parents and um, the ones that you may want to think about rewording a little bit. So let's start with the not so good questions to ask adoptive parents. Um, the first one that I feel like we get a lot of is how much did it cost? Like, how much did they cost? That's like super tacky. Like, please, please, please don't ever ask an adoptive family how much their children cost because for obvious reasons, that's just a big no. Um, a better or alternative question would be, we're interested in the process. Is it a very expensive process? I love to talk more about that when you have time. Um, <laughs> A much better question. Um, another one is, um, let's see, where did they come from? Where'd you get them? That's another one that just drives me absolutely batty. Um, I mean, I don't know if they're expecting that you're going to say they came from a different planet or um, if they came from some specialty shop or something, but um, maybe a better way to word that is um, we are interested in international adoption. Is that something that um, you've done? Can we talk about that sometime, something like that? But um, definitely don't ask where they came from. Um, let's see, the other one is, what about their real family? Like, where are they? You know, that again, that question is just, it's very hurtful um, because the adoptive family is the real family. Yes, they have a birth family and that is also their family. Um, and that will never change, but um, it's a very complicated situation. Um, there's a lot of emotions that are involved and it's very traumatic, especially if the child is close by. That's just something you do not want to delve into right then and there. Um, just have respect for the family and for the child and what they've been through. Um, the other one I think um, a lot of times that gets asked, especially when you're a foster parent, is why are they in foster care? Why were they taken? What's wrong with them? Again, you know, most people won't ask those questions, but they have been asked, and that is, again, really painful, um, if, especially if the child is there. And even if the child is not, um, you know, every child has a right to privacy. Every family, I believe, has a right to privacy, regardless of the situation. And so it's just not any of your business, <laughs> to be honest. Um, that is something that is confidential, and a foster parent can certainly share their experience, but um, their child's uh, personal story is their own. And so it's just nice to be able to respect that and um, to not pry into their business in that way. Um, you know, the best way if you really want to know um, how to help, because maybe that was that was where you were going with that question, would be, you know, how can I support you? How can I help you? Um, how can I help your child through this journey? Um, that would be another very nice way to kind of support your friends in what they're doing. Um, Another question, and this kind of delves along or delves into a different um, where I had originally wanted to go with the whole foster care adoption FAQ, is um, just the basic questions that people have when they begin the process or maybe some concerns that they have and the reasons that they have not begun the foster or adoptive process um, are because of these these particular questions or sticking points. Um, 
one of the ones that we hear all the time is, I could never do what you do. I would just get so attached and I would never want to let them go. So let me just tackle that for a second. <laughs> While that is definitely how I think every foster parent feels, um, it's not easy for us to let these kids go. It's not easy to say goodbye and it shouldn't be because we should be developing healthy attachments with our foster children. Um, it is going to be hard, and um, but being able to let them go when it's time to let them go is part of the process, um, and it's part of um, realizing that the situation that you are in, this sort of triangle that you are part of, um, where it's you know the the child and you and the birth parents, you have to understand that you are doing what is best for the child. This is not about you, <laughs> it's about the child. And as difficult as that is, um, we as adults can handle loss, we can handle trauma, we can handle these things way better than these kiddos can. They are hurting, they have been through things that no child should ever have to go through and they have faced pain and loss and suffering and you know up against all of that our feelings of, of being sad and hurt when they leave are definitely valid but they should in no way be a reason not to help these children you know um I just always encourage people to just pray about that and really think about that because when it comes down to it, as harsh as it sounds, and I know it sounds harsh, it's not about you, it's about these kids. And if you truly want to help them, then you realize that that comes along with it and, um, and you work through that. You know, you don't let that stop you because you may not think that you're a strong enough person, but if this is what you're meant to do, you will find the strength and you will be part of something so amazing and so magical that, um, and so beautiful that you will not doubt that the reason that you're doing it is for the child, if that makes sense. So um, the next question that gets asked a lot or brought to um, kind of our, asked to us, quite a bit is, um, is it expensive? Is it an expensive process? I, I would love to adopt, but it just seems like it's really expensive. So um, we, and this is our experience, this is our experience where we live, through the county we lived in, um, and in the state we lived in. So I know each state, each county, even within a state can be different, but this is our experience. So um, no, when you adopt through the foster care system, typically our experience is that you are not shelling out hundreds or thousands of dollars. Um, you are supported every month as a foster parent. Um, you are given basically like a reimbursement to help pay for the child's clothes, um, for any like sports that they might want to be a part of. Um, basically room and board sort of it's not a lot but it does cover the basics um it is not something that people should get into in the hopes of making money off of and um, that's all the wrong reasons to do it anyways but um you're definitely we definitely always um gave more back financially than we were reimbursed for, but it wasn't a ton. It wasn't enough that like bankrupt us or made us stop um, doing what we were doing. And when it came time to adopt, um, we did pay a fee, but it was reimbursed to us. So um, the other great thing is the county that we adopted through offers adoption assistance payments um, through the age of 18. For these kids and so um, which you will need because the majority of them do have some sort of special needs I um, mean even if they didn't come with with special needs they definitely come with 
with a past and with trauma um, and with loss. You know, they've lost their um, their foundation, their their biological family in some capacity. Whether it's whether they're still involved in their lives or not, they've lost a lot. And so, um, you know, you will need that extra payment. Sorry, my cats are fading. You will need that extra payment every month. That will come in handy. Um, they are also given um, insurance until they are, I believe it's 18. I believe it can go till 22 if they are, um, if they have significant special needs. And so you definitely are supported through that process financially um, somewhat. It's not a ton. It definitely doesn't cover everything, but it covers the basics and it keeps you from going completely, you know, um, upside down when you're trying to adopt. So um, I would say that private adoption, international adoption, um, those are not my area of expertise. Um, you would have to speak to those um, particular agencies. I know international ad adoption can be quite costly um, and requires um, travel usually to the country and um, an extended stay in that country before you can bring that child back. Um, but again, it's not my area of expertise. I have friends that have adopted internationally and I just know that much from um, watching them. Um, same with private adoption. That can be quite costly. Um, and it's, you know, it's just a different, it's just a different way of, of adopting. And so um, I would encourage you, if you are interested in private adoption, to look at several different agencies, call them and ask them lots of questions um, because it's going to be a, a different, um, a different process altogether. Um, I think uh, another question that we have gotten a lot is, does it take a long time to become certified to be a foster parent um, or to um, become an adoptive parent? And the answer to that is um, yes and no. It depends on what your idea of a long time is. So for us, because we, we actually certified a few different times, we took breaks in between a couple different times. Um, and I would say the average time to get certified to be a foster parent was between six and nine months, but it can take, it can take over a year um, and it can take less time. So it just kind of depends on you. Um, the agency that we went with um, is a private agency. I believe it's a nonprofit agency. Um, and they were basically contracted through the county that we were in. So we didn't go directly through the county. We went through um, a foster adopt agency. So those are two different things. If you go directly through the county, then you do everything through the county. If you do an agency, you do everything through the agency and the county kind of oversees the agency. And so um, the benefit of going with the foster agency is that you get more one-on-one, -on -one, more training, um, more support, more kind of hands-on help and um, we wanted that like we had to fill out a ton of paperwork every month but our agency was there helping us to fill it out making sure everything got taken care of and they ultimately were responsible for making sure that all of that was into the county where it needed to be and so we liked that that was definitely helpful now it was um it did actually there were some times sorry I have to turn this my thing is my thing is beeping um there were definitely times where you know having so many eyes on us all the time was taxing because you know you feel like you're a bug under a microscope all the time because you have social workers in your house every week and um, when you're with the county it's like once a month and so but this was good because I felt like I needed it because it kept me on top of things it kept my house clean or it kept me making sure that I was keeping everything um, 
within regulations and that I was, you know, just on top of paperwork and everything. So I actually um, appreciated that and I would probably do it again the same way as we did last time um, and go with an agency if we were to ever do it again. So, um, yeah, I think that those are basically the biggest questions that we get asked. Um, I, if you have any more, please leave them in the comments below. I'd be happy to do another video like this um, where I answer more questions. But um, I would say my biggest piece of advice to anybody who's considering adoption or foster care is to pray about it, meditate on it, think about it, you know, whatever you need to do to get right and to feel centered about what you're about to embark upon. Um, I would say, um, and just really look at statistics and look at the need that's out there and if you're feeling called or led in any way um, to help in this, to help with these children, then I would say start asking questions. Start asking questions, start doing your research, um, start calling agencies, and just go to an orientation or two um, and learn more. And then if you have more questions after that, then come back, feel free to leave them here and I will help you as much as possible. This is a passion of mine. Um, this is something that I feel very strongly about and I could talk about it for hours and hours. So anyways, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Please like and subscribe and I will see you guys in my next video.